Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we have a late night insight on a Francesca Bianchi fragrance and it is called Tiger Tiger. Now, um, this decant was kindly sent to me somewhere along the way. I have no idea where. I've been sitting on this for maybe a year. Uh, I've worn it to bed three times. This is the third time I've had a chance to wear it to bed. Um, and I want to give you my thoughts. So these late night insight videos are just kind of meant to be me putting my thoughts out there to the ethosphere on a fragrance that I'll probably never own a full bottle of. The reality of the situation is that uh, I've done three videos on Francesca Bianchi's work so far, and all three of them I've liked, but all three of them I felt like other fragrances did it better. I always feel like her fragrances are not good enough to be full bottles for me, but they're not bad enough for me to bash, if that makes sense. So this is the fourth review. And we'll see where this one falls, but let me read you the most outlandish write-up, blurb, or whatever you want to call it. Um, listen to this. In a post-apocalyptic world, sounds like I'm beginning like a movie theater, like you're, like you're in a preview for a movie. In a post-apocalyptic world, a survivor of a sophisticated and refined civilization is wearing a shimmering, tailor-made dress, walking through a smoky, obscure place. The, con the contraposition between beauty and terror is expressed by Tiger, the Tiger by W. Blake. The animal is incredibly charming and seducing, yet dark, terrible, and dramatic. The perfume is the result of this striking and sublime combination, creating a unique, mesmerizing atmosphere. I just want to slap the shit out of whoever wrote that. I'm not going to lie. Let me read you the poem that this is based on by Blake, William Blake, the Tiger. Tiger, tiger, burning bright, in the forest of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? Or symmetry, I don't fucking know. Um, okay, so here's the thing about Tiger, tiger. It opens up with a little bit of a cheap-smelling, fresh floral that I thought was orange blossom. There's no orange blossom listed, but there is a blossoms accord, but... Uh, I don't think that blossoms necessarily smell like orange blossom, but there is like a fresh, uh, cheap-smelling white floral in the opening, the first 30 seconds, minute, that I really didn't care for. Um, and that does go away. There is this heavy, powdery, violet, iris, amber, vanilla thing that hits your nose very quickly. And if you've smelled some of her other creations, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. There's this accord that she's created that she puts in everything. Uh, and it's this very heavy-handed, you know, it makes her fragrances feel very heavy and thick. And I actually do like that uh, part. Some people say she uses way too much of it, but I mean, it's a slap you in your face, you'll get it right away. This very thick, dense, ambery, vanillic, you know, like, um, denseness. Now, um, it just smells like a Francesca Bianchi. Her Her work has a specific signature to it. And sometimes I say that in a good way with some people, and sometimes I say that in a bad way. Um, so for my most favorite Francesca Bianchi fragrance, which was Under My Skin, if you said, Ramsey, I'm going to give you one Francesca Bianchi fragrance for free, which one do you want? It would definitely be Under My Skin. The problem, again, and the reason I don't own a bottle of Under My Skin, is that I think that Papillon's Salome is a better fragrance. If I was going to spend my money, I would spend it on this. And I also have a bottle of... Bala Versailles, which I have reviewed on the channel by Jean de Pez. Um, one of the most beautiful bottles with the harp top, um, the somewhat lascivious looking um, maids or, or ladies at the at the ball, the ball at Versailles, all dressed up in their best in their best dresses. Um, and you know, these two fragrances just do under my skin better, in my opinion. So that's one of the issues with Francesca Bianchi's work. And, you know, you get this very heavy, ambery, violet thing that just kind of defines her. Definitely, I get this violety, purple, iris thing when I, when I smell her work. And I get it here, too, and I'm really shocked that there's no violet or there's no iris listed in the note listing. That is shocking to me. Um, the note listing is blossoms, peach jam, tuberose absolute, honey, heliotropin, leather, oak moss, oud, patchouli, and sandalwood. So no iris, no violet, which I, I find impossible. I get a huge dose of this purpley, violety iris thing that you've smelled in her other work, if you know what I'm talking about. So um, 
Like I said, in this space that she competes in, 30 mils of this, and, and it is an x-ray, but still, 30, 30 mils is 108 euros. Um, so, you know, it's not too exorbitant, but I mean, it's a pretty small amount, 30 mils. Um, she considers this a Shepra fruity, a woody fruity Shepra is what she lists the accords on her website. Parfumo says it's a sweet floral fragrance. I guess it's kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, but the issue with this perfume is that one of the big floral accords is a tuberose, a tuberose absolute. And yesterday I reviewed maybe one of my favorite tuberose fragrances I've ever smelled. Uh, it would be full bottle worthy instantly if money was no issue and if I wasn't on a no buy right now. But um, I reviewed Eris Parfum's Night Flower, created by Antoine Lee. Brilliant tuberose in, in that. I love that fragrance. Um, again, full bottle worthy. This is a tuberose in Tiger Tiger that kind of does the opposite of that. You know, in um, Night Flower, it was kind of creamy and smooth and it highlighted some of the narcotic elements. Here, it highlights some of the screechy white floral elements and it gives you a little bit of that green camphoraceous note. If you ever seen the tuberose absolute that I have from Russian Adam, the actual thing, it looks like it's so green, it looks like ground up grass or ground up leaves, you know, or something like that. And here it brings out a little bit of that green camphoraceous side of it, um, which I really don't care for. And it's, it's a little bit screechy. The, the orange, that what I thought was orange blossom note in the top is a little bit screechy, that white floral intro thing that hits you. And the reason I say orange blossom uh, is it has a freshness to it. Like when you first spray, the, the floral bit feels fresh. Now you may be thinking, I'm going to hate this fragrance, but there's actually some redeeming qualities. I mean, there's some bad, there's other bad parts as well. The oud note in here literally smells like glue. Um, it smells like you're smelling, like, have you ever, did you ever make models when you were a kid? I remember one of the things that me and my dad used to do is we would go back when they had model store, they had stores that sold like model airplanes and model ships. Those stores have all been put out of business by Amazon and stuff like that now. But, um, you know, I remember going down to the model store, picking up like a, a Fock Wolf or an old F-14 or something and building it. And, um, you know, the specific glue that you used in, in gluing the parts together had this specific smell. And that's what the Oud note in Tiger Tiger to my nose smells like. And I don't really care for it. I don't think it's a very good execution of it. I don't hate it, but it just doesn't, doesn't do it for me. Um, and it's this scent, the, I guess the best way to describe Tiger Tiger for me is the scent feels like it vibrates. And you probably heard a lot about Eugene talk a lot about vibration lately. And this scent vibrates to me sort of in a way that I can't quite put my finger on because some parts I really like. Um, and some parts I have this love-hate relationship with. And some parts of this fragrance I absolutely despise. Sometimes it even flips. It vibrates away from where I'm trying to put my finger on it from even one sniff to the next. I could sniff it think something, sniff it again, and it feels like the fragrance has vibrated away. Um, it's almost like if you put your phone on vibrate and it's on the counter, and when it vibrates, it kind of moves, and it moves some more every time it vibrates, and you just are looking, doing something else, and you put your hand where you think your phone should be, and it's not there. That's the way this fragrance makes me feel. It makes me feel like it doesn't really line up properly, you know? It feels like there's just something that is just like the, like you go to high five your buddy and you, you miss and then you try the other, you both overcompensate and then you miss again and then you laugh about it. Um, that's kind of the way that this fragrance feels. It's a strong vibration. It's a strong fragrance. Um, whatever you can say about her blending and her overuse of a certain material, which I do think she overuses that accord she created. Uh, she puts it in everything, so if you hate it, you're going to hate all of her fragrances. But if you like it, you'll probably like them all, um, or love them all. I'm kind of in that boat where I'm, um, you know, it's not that I'm indifferent. I'm just like, meh. I mean, a lot of her stuff doesn't move me. I did blind buy one of her fragrances once. Um, I blind bought Etruscan Water because Persele said that this smelled like Azure, uh, like vintage Azure. And I was like, what? And sure enough, I bought it, and then I was like, wait a minute. Doesn't smell like vintage Azure at all, uh, in my opinion, anyways. I'll review vintage Azure one of these days, because um, that, that will definitely get a Hall of Fame review from me. But um, 
it just feels like, you know, the vibration moves it. It moves the fragrance away from where it should be. And I really don't like a couple things in this fragrance. Number one, I really don't like the honey and peach note combined. And you all know me. Honey is one of my favorite notes of all time. I've reviewed some of my favorite honey fragrances ever. I recently reviewed a Hall of Fame review on uh, Hugo Boss number one, my favorite honey fragrance of all time, or one of them. Uh, I reviewed Miel de Bois uh, within the last four or five months. That's one of the best honey fragrances, period, on the market. Uh, and, and so I've got more honey fragrances that all that have a, a honey note that are on the list to review as well. But this one, it just feels like the honey note and the peach come together in your brain when you're smelling it to give you this candied peach thing. Like, it, have you ever had like a, you ever been to the fair around like Halloween time or Oktoberfest or something and they, and they sell those caramel dipped apples, right? Um, imagine a honey dipped peach with the consistency of the caramel around the outside of the apple. That's the thickness of the sweet honey note around the peach. And you know, it's not the worst sweet note that I've smelled, but it also, again, I feel like it could be better. There's so many things in this fragrance that I don't like that I feel like if they were done better, this would be an amazing fragrance. Um, and that honey note is one of them. The honey peach combo thing with that weird, you know, honey candied peach thing don't go well together. And I really don't like the glue smelling oud. Um, I really don't like the way the tuberose is executed. I think those three. If you fix those three, the extra sweetness of that honey candy peach, the way the tuberose is done, which is supposedly one of the main notes of this, this is supposed to be like a floral perfume, uh, but done in that Francesca Bianchi way with this thick, ambery, heavy, uh, violety, irisy, just if you smelled her fragrances, you know. Um, but there are other things about this fragrance that I actually like. So, for example, there's this almondy, chewy, like um, heliotropin note, as they listed. They listed the note of heliotropin, and heliotropin is another denomination for uh, piperonol, which is a fragrant ingredient that resembles the scent of vanilla and almond, uh, as well as the plant heliotrope. And if you know vanilla and almond, and you know heliotrope, um, and you're thinking what I'm thinking with heliotrope and violet, um, you're probably thinking about this little bad boy. This is Le Bleu. I can't see because uh, this is a refill bottle of Le Bleu. I should have got the other one. I've got a couple of bottles of this. This is the Eau de Parfum. I also have the Eau de Toilette. I love them both. Um, I think Le Bleu is one of the most brilliant fragrances of all time. And, um, you know, the blue hour, if you will, the hour right before the sun sets, but it still feels like there's some light out there. Uh, and this fragrance has one of the best quotes of all time from a perfumer. Um, I believe it was Jacques Guerlain who said that uh, he felt something so strongly he had to put it in a perfume. Nothing else would do. And so sometimes when I wear these type of fragrances, like I spend all my time testing this shit, and then I smell something like this. And I'm like, why do I bother? You know, seriously, like why do I put myself through all of this, um, testing all of this crap? Why don't I just wear these Guerlains that I love so much? I mean, you know, they... Um, they, they do exactly what I want. Um, I mean, shit. I mean, how do you, how do you improve on that? It's, um, it's impossible. And the feelings that this invokes in you when you wear Leur Blue. Wow. Even the more modern Eau de Parfum is just stunning. So, so that's one of my issues with this. I really don't like the way that white floral sticks around and it just feels kind of cheap. That tuberose absolute doesn't feel like the high quality tuberose that I really have come to like in things like Desandra's and things like yesterday's review of um, Nightflower. I recently found a decant that I think the same person who sent me Nightflower sent me MXXX. So there will be another Eris review very soon. Um, and so... You know, for me, I like the fact that that heliotrope, violety iris thing, which is not listed as a note, but it's definitely there, mixing, you know, together um, gives a little bit of a Le Bleu vibe, right? I like that homage to Guerlain, like a modern Le Bleu. It's just that it's not done well enough for me to go, man, I'm going to go buy this fragrance because honestly, I would just do what I just did right now and just spray Le Bleu because fuck. 
I mean, you talk about transportive. My God, man. Um, that is such a moody, beautiful fragrance. And um, the other thing about Tiger Tiger I actually like is I like the leather note. The more it stays on your skin, this is about a three hour dry down. Um, but I've sat through multiple hours of this being on the skin many a times. And the more it stays on your skin, the more that uh, leather note seems to come out a little bit more. And the other thing that happens, and I'm not 100% sure whether I'm smelling the greenness of the tuberose or whether it's just, I think it's oak moss, to be honest with you, but there's this textured green feeling that starts to come out. It feels like you're smelling a vintage old school oak moss note, which I actually really like. Um, so if you take all the negatives over here and the positives over here, it just kind of gets into a, eh, I mean, there's good and there's bad. You know, if you've watched Robes 08, uh, Mark's videos from the Robes 08 channel, you know that he used to do these videos where he would say, is this a bottle? When he would sample stuff, he would say, is this a bottle? Is this a pass? Or is this maybe like another sample? If you forced me to pick something for Tiger Tiger, I would probably say another sample if that was a choice. Um, I wouldn't get another sample because there's no need to revisit this because I would never buy a bottle. Um, but I, um, I think it's kind of in that middle ground. I think if you're maybe new to niche, this would be okay. But to be quite honest with you, I would tell you to just skip this and go straight to something like Le Bleu. Um, and I know they're different fragrances and maybe you have to have a special appreciation. Maybe someone who would feel this is too old fashioned would appreciate Tiger Tiger. I don't know. Um, in, in her little blurb, she says, I, in this composition, I have been searching for the perfect balance between two opposite elements and the expression of their clashing contraposition. I had in mind a post apocalyptic condition where traces of highly sophisticated and refined civilization survived in the dark and fearful conditions of a collapsed and destructive world, like every big city in America. Blake's tiger embodies both qualities I wanted to depict sublime and irresistibly attractive from one side and terrible and scary from the other. The fearful symmetry, a character attributed to the tiger by W. Blake, aptly represent this opposition of beautiful perfection and terror. The perfume is built around an accord of narcotic white florals with sweet fruity facets, which include also an absolute of tuberose like a prima donna, the protagonist of the dramatic piece, she is the finest example of a refined civilization of a bygone world. In opposition to that, the base notes represent present different kinds of woods with some burnt and leather qualities, referring to post-apocalyptic scenarios of destruction, mystery, and darkness. So the woods do come out a little bit more in the base. The leather comes out more in the base, which I actually like. The textured oak moss feeling comes out a little bit more in the base. Um, and... Yes, I mean, the result of these parts, which wouldn't work individually, is a clashing, sparkling fragrance, which gives me an exciting emotion of highly dramatic sophistication, the kind of contrasted sentiment that anything attractive arouses in me. So, um, I don't know what that means. But, uh, but yes, I mean, it's a Francesca Bianchi fragrance. What can I say? I mean, that's honestly the best way I can describe it. It's a Francesca Bianchi fragrance. It falls right in line with what you would expect from her. This was created from her in 2020, I believe. So, yeah, I mean, it's um, it's something I wanted to put my thoughts out there before I put this aside with the decants that I've uh, that I've discussed. I do hang on to these because what ends up happening invariably is six months from now, someone will ask me, hey, what do you think about Tiger Tiger? And by then, I will have sampled thousands of fragrances and completely forgot about this. So um, I do go back to these. So, uh, you know, I know some people give their samples away when they're done, but I keep them because I go back to them because I feel like it's like part of my study, my ongoing study. Like it's uh, like I'm like I'm getting my doctorate degree in fragrances here. But um, but yeah, if you smell Tiger Tiger, I'd love to know if you agree or disagree with me, what your thoughts are on Francesca Bianchi, the house. Uh, I think I do have another sample or two from her, so you will hear more of, from the house on the channel. And I know that these reviews that are just kind of like lukewarm, they're kind of like, eh, don't get people excited. People get excited about negative reviews, and they get excited about super positive reviews. But the problem is, is that middle road is probably where most of your fragrances were fall. Not everything is shit, and not everything is going to be a love. I mean... You know, the the loves for me, you guys have come to know. The Hugo Boss number ones, 
the Antaeuses, the Bellamies, the Diagalevs, right? The Mitsukos, which that one, that review is still upcoming. Those loves are few and far between. You have a lot in the middle. And then you have the ones you absolutely hate and despise. So sometimes as a when you're doing these reviews, which is really me just getting on here and rambling, you're going to have stuff in the middle like this. And I feel like that's okay because with current YouTube culture, what it is, uh, not many people do these type of reviews. So I'm okay if a fragrance just falls into this middle climate zone, you know, it's not really hot and it's not really cold. Uh, maybe you should sample it for yourself. You know, for me, this is one of those fragrances that I think it's okay. I wouldn't pull the trigger on it though. I wouldn't spend my money on it. Um, you know, there are some fragrances like that one from yesterday, Night Flower from Eris, where I went, man, if I wasn't on a no buy, this would be a bottle. Um, and, and so, yes, I mean, um, the other thing about Eris and one of the things that why I really need to sample more from the house is they use that same La Atelier France, Francois fragrance oil house that um, uh, Les Indemodables uses and Eugene's Les Abstraits use. So I really need to test more Eris fragrances. That's a house I need to, I think that's a real fraghead house. Like if you're big into proper ingredients and well blended fragrances, Eris is a house to check out. So Anyways, uh, tell me about uh, Tiger Tiger, if you've had a chance to smell it, if you've sampled some of these Francesca Bianchi's, let me know what you think. Love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching, as always. Appreciate the support, feedback, all the stuff you guys do, liking the videos. You know, I never have to tell you, I just look and there's 50 or 60 or 80 or 100 likes. Uh, so I really do appreciate that, guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.